Hurricane Dorian or COVID-19, visit www.bahamasite.org for their helplines. Fixed and mobile services provided by Cable Bahamas Business Solutions helps our customers help their customers adapt to the new way of paying for things. Digital wallets makes your transactions faster, more convenient, and secure. Whether it's using a debit card at the grocery store or making online payments for your monthly expenses, digital wallets powered by Cable Bahamas Business Solutions makes it better. For more information on our fixed and mobile services, contact the experts at 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands. When you play us to win, you get ads for free. Here's how it works. Play ZNS Radio, 1540 AM, 104.5 FM, in your store every day, all day. We'll pop in, and if we like what we're hearing, you get ads on radio for one month. And that's all you have to do. Simple, right? So contact us today, 502-3800, and win free airtime when you play our station in your store. Listen, that goes for Grand Bahama and the Abacos in the north, all the way to Nagua in the south, you know. Wait, if you are in free days, you got to play us to win big. One thing there is no debate about is that ETC has the best rates. Now, the best rates just got better because you pay half the price of the other guys with your BTC home internet and mobile services combined. Switching to BTC is a no-brainer because I pay less with BTC and get super fast internet with speeds up to 600 megs. The other guys, their internet only go up to 105 megs. Get all the internet you want at half the price when you bundle your home internet and mobile. Visit a BTC store to make the switch today. Jumping, dancing, having fun, and dancing through the broken drum. Break and break and jump and do. All on the beach, on the fun, the move is gone. This is the ZNS Network, providing radio and high-definition television services for the entire Bahamas. ZNS Network is operated by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. It is located at Harcourt Rusty Bethel Drive, Centerville, Nassau. Our programming is designed to inform, educate, and entertain. We invite you to join us. The following is a preamble of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Whereas 481 years ago, the rediscovery of this family of islands, rocks and keys, heralded the rebirth of the new world. And whereas the people of this family of islands, recognizing that the preservation of their freedom will be guaranteed by a national commitment to self-discipline, industry, loyalty, unity, and an abiding respect for Christian values and the rule of law. Now, know we therefore, 
we the inheritors of and successors to this family of Allens, recognizing the supremacy of God and believing in the fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual to hereby proclaim in solemn praise the establishment of a free and democratic sovereign nation founded on spiritual values and in which no man, woman, or child shall ever be slave or bondsman to anyone or their labor exploited or their lives frustrated by deprivation and do hereby provide by these articles for the indivisible unity and creation under God of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Thursday, March 24th, 2022, and the morning edition is live. On today's show, a stabbing on the campus of a government school, police continuing their community outreach, we have a history lesson on the Reinhardt Hotel, and a world welcome for Shawnee and Devin. So let's start the morning off right. you by We Buy You Sell Company, your leading hurricane impact windows, doors, and tile specialist. The difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the morning edition. I'm LaDawn Davis. And I'm not going to say my name because... Prince Charles. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I'm talking about ordinary and extraordinary. Uh -huh. We are getting set for the royal oh, visit yes. that all starts oh, today. Yes. So you're going to get extraordinary oh, tomorrow. definitely. And then you're going to the salon, mm -hmm. your eye on fleek, everything, your lipstick. Everything, everything. Crystal and I, we're going to we're gonna be decked out tomorrow. I'm sure you're going to be debonair uh, as well. And I know all those invited guests <laughs> to all those stuff, they are going to try mm -hmm. and put on their Sunday best. And look, hey, so this is going to be a fashion awesome show time. weekend over yes. the next few days as the Bahamas gets ready for the royal visit. And we have a royal treat for you this morning because we're going to do something special just for the royals, and we're going to test our viewers' IQ and how much do they know about the royals, the Duke and Duchess that, that are coming here. Are you going to test yourself? Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm so I'm happy. sure you did your research. We've been doing our research. research. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've been doing a lot of research already. Uh -huh. Don't forget, we're coming to you live one hour tomorrow from Rawson Square, so make sure to tune in to that. Lots of activities. Stay tuned to ZNS Television Network for all your royal visit coverage. We have you covered from start to finish, and we are ready to go. So let's start things out with our Krista Darling, who's out on the streets with our morning traffic. Good morning, Chrissy. Good morning, LaDonna, and good morning, Fisher. Good morning, Bahamas. We are here on East West Highway, and this morning I'm here with Officer Patrick Kim. Good morning, Officer Kim. Uh, good morning, Crystal, and good morning, Bahamas. Okay, Officer Kim. So we know that on East West Highway tends to have a lot of traffic. Um, could you talk to us about speed limits this morning? Uh, and you're absolutely correct. Usually this highway, especially traveling towards the roundabout, Independence Roundabout, tends to build up pretty fast with traffic. And so I want to, and the, the distance from, from Marathon Road to the roundabout is a short distance. I want to encourage the drivers to please slow down on this highway. Uh, the excessive speed is, is not necessary. Uh, you still must obey the speed limit on this road. And for the for the persons who are traveling to the to the more southern southwestern direction towards the Independence Roundabout, they tend to make a U-turn to head back to the Marathon Mall direction. That is so dangerous because when the light is green for persons heading towards the roundabout, the light is green for persons heading to the Marathon Mall. And so the sign is rigged that it says no U-turn. And if you're making that U-turn while a vehicle is coming heading in the opposite direction, you 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 put yourself in a bad predicament for a a a large uh, collision to occur. I, we don't need that on on the streets. Thank you so much for that, Officer Kemp. Back to you in the studio, Fisher and Ladon. Well, thanks a lot. We are waking up to 77 degrees, partly cloudy, wind south southeast at 15 miles per hour, humidity 78%. Now, a ridge of high pressure across the Bahamas continues to generate moderate to fresh breezes around the islands as it gradually retreats eastwards today. Fall areas weather partly sunny, warm and breezy with a few quick passing showers possible today. Fair and breezy tonight. High temperature 86, overnight low of 72. And once again, as we look ahead to Friday, Friday, the big day of all the activities. Expect some rain early in the morning, but I know we're going to do some rain dance today to get that out of here. Breezy downpours in the morning, 81 in the day, 70 at night. And then on Saturday, back to normal, Bahamian weather, mostly sunny and nice, 81 in the day, 
69 at night. Acknowledging that 2021 was a challenging year for crime in this country, National Security Minister the Honorable Rain Monroe says there's still cause for optimism, as a preliminary review indicated that the rate of crime remained unchanged by the end of last year. Additionally, he says the use of integrated technology like drones, CCTV, and shot spotter are allowing authorities to gain significant ground in the crime fight, coupled with a significant investment in human resource training that has resulted in improved prosecution and higher conviction rates. The crime against the person increased by 18% in 2021, with 870 incidents compared to 736 in 2020. Property crimes decreased by 4% in 2021, with 3,211 incidents compared with 3,328 in 2020. During the year, there was a 13% regional decrease in crime on the family islands when compared to 2020. There was a regional increase, however, in New Providence and Grand Bahama at rates of 2% and 1%. A man was gunned down on Wednesday morning, reportedly the 33rd victim so far for this year. The victim's identity was not disclosed by police, but they say he's in his late 20s and he was a resident of an Airbnb on Stewfish Drive off Kamaika Road, the very same property on which he was killed. His police press liaison officer, Superintendent Audley Peters, with what police discovered when they arrived on the scene. Our officers responded and they came to an apartment complex where in the parking lot they found a male lying next to a vehicle with wounds to his head that were consistent with gunshot. Our preliminary facts in this instance is that the victim was leaving his residence to go to his vehicle when four males armed with firearms approached him and shot him, fatally wounding him. Two young men are in police custody following a stabbing at the AF Adderley Junior High School on Wednesday. Principal Dr. Virginia Roma tells us how the incident unfolded. While the students were changing classes, moving from one class to the other, um, we had an incident on campus where a student would have stabbed another student. Um, it was not a stabbing that was life-threatening. We had the nurse on campus, by the time the police came, you know, we had a head start on exactly what had happened. And then they came and they took it over from there to further do their investigation. Our hope is to get a metal detector that would help us to um, identify these um, instruments that they may have on their person that we may not be able to freely touch and feel with our hands. And in doing that, um, prevent them from coming on campus. Police pressing on with their community outreach, expanding their efforts to the Montel Heights community. Some 200 packages of grocery along with clothing were distributed on the community park. Assistant Commissioner of Police Craig Stubbs says the goal is to build safer communities and stronger ties with the public. From where I start, uh, it's an everyday uh, request from the Florida Commissioner to visit these communities to do this, to do this initiative. Uh, we understand with the pandemic, there were a lot of uh, families who were waiting whether financially in the homes. So when the initiative came about, uh, it was something that at first it was created with the We saw how the communities responded and then we saw how uh, it helped us in our policing initiative. So with the community and the policing and this initiative, uh, it's helped so tremendously. Education officials using recovery programs to ensure students at risk for not meeting the graduation criteria in June can actually meet the benchmark. Minister of Education, Technical and Vocational Training, the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin, encourages students to take full advantage of the options available to them. And we're reviewing that now. I mean, it's very late in the game now. The school year is ending shortly. And so I don't think fundamentally you'll see um, fundamental reform in, the, in that regard. But we are reviewing it because it's my view that um, certainly aspects of that must be revisited to see how, without lowering academic standards, to see how we can um, not create barriers and, and be more facilitative for performing students. So that, that is underway. And when we come back, we have a history lesson on the Reinhardt Hotel, so keep it locked.
what would I like people to know about women in leadership is that women being in leadership does not deny an opportunity to a man to be in leadership. We can all be in leadership together. And in fact, leadership makes its most effective decisions when it's getting those different viewpoints from all segments of society. My advice would be to young women to never rest on your laurels. Always be thinking about what is the next thing that you can do or need to learn. will be an extremely busy one on the streets with all the activities planned for the royal visit. Still, officials are ensuring a smooth visit. This morning, Lloyd Allen tells us what motorists can expect. As the nation approaches the 11th hour prior to the arrival of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, there are some road closures and diversions you'll need to know in order to navigate during their time in the Bahamas. There will be no road closures for Thursday. However, on Friday from 9.30 a.m., until 11 a.m. Carmichael Road will be closed from Barbuda Street east to Golden Sun Road. According to Corporal Brittany Roll of the Royal Bahamas Police Forces Traffic Division, there are two additional areas set for temporary adjustments, downtown Nassau and East Bay Street. Vehicles will not be able to park between 5 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. on the Bay Street area due to the road closures for Friday. The closure will take place from Frederick Street to East Street. Traffic will be diverted north onto Frederick Street, east onto Woods Rogers Walk, south onto East Street, east back onto Bay Street. As for the third... The final closure for that day would take place from 12 p.m. until 3 o'clock p.m., which would extend from Harbor Bay Shopping Plaza to Montague Beach. Traffic would be diverted into one lane. They would still have access to pass in that area, so it wouldn't be a complete closure. Members of the public are still allowed to pass and to view the royals if they can. Officials advise that diversions will take place as early as 5 a.m. and that motorists pay close attention to additional changes. Um, I would advise the public to stay updated with the news. Um, we have social media platforms and we also have it in, in our cars for people who are not that literate with their cell phones or computers and to keep listening for the different changes that are coming. Now, with all that's set to take place on Friday, drivers are encouraged to exercise the utmost caution and care on the streets. Well, we're going to test the IQ of not only ourselves, but our viewers yeah. this morning to see how much do you know about Kate and William this morning. So, oh boy, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's bring the first question up on the screen. How old was the Queen at the time of her coronation? 5023855. You can call in the dial and let mm -hmm. us know. There's no prizes. We just want to test your knowledge. How old, how old was she? I'm going to say 27, 28. I think you've been looking at the answers. 27, 28. We only could give one answer. 28. 28. Let's see the answer. 27. That's how old she was at the time of her coronation. Now, let's bring up the second question on our screen. William and Kate met at university. What subject did they both study? I was doing a bit of a history. I know that she likes chocolate cake, and I know that they did. What does this have to do with study? I did, but my research, <laughs> and it did say that she studied history at St. Andrews University. Well, the dawn is right on this one, I think so. Yeah. Bring up the answer, yes. yes. The history of art. Now, you're going to ask me the next two questions. Let me, let me see <laughs> so, if my IQ is really... Okay, so what are the names of Prince Charles' five grandchildren? No, wait, let's see. Let's see that. Wait, let's see what they bring up on the screen first. Okay. What are the names of Prince Charles' five grandchildren? I don't even know the name of my own children. Uh, <laughs> I know one is George, Philip, George, Charlotte, Louis, Archie, and Lilibet. Those are some names. Lilibet, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now go, go ahead. No, okay. Wait. And um, what, soccer what soccer team do Prince William and George support? It is not the Miami Dolphins, like you. You. you I, I was. Yeah, yeah. I was just about to say. <laughs> you said Aston Villa, or yes, I got it. Yes, right. Aston, all right. Aston Villa. All right. And we have. Good I think job. we have one more question to bring up for our viewers. Okay. How old was Prince Philip at the time of his death? I know this one. Everybody knows that he was yes. one, one short of a hundred. Of a hundred. Yes. So he was ninety-nine. So, yes. so we look like we are. We, we are ready for yeah. our, I think yeah. we are ready for I our Lord visit if yeah. anybody asks us any question. 
I think we're ready. Now it's time now to take a walk down memory lane, the historic Reinhardt Hotel built in the 1930s by Dr. Claudius Roland Walker and Mabel Walker is located on Blue Hill Road North. The couple who lived on the adjacent hospital lane ran this iconic hotel that hosted a number of events. Director of the Antiquities, Monuments and Museums Corporation, Dr. Christopher Curry, explains that the building served as a meeting place for many of the country's influential movements. Actually a hotel, but the lobby and, and bottom floor was actually used as a meeting center. Uh, it was used by the suffragettes in the 1950s into the 60s as a meeting place. Uh, it was also used in 1967 as the headquarters for the PLP as they won the, the majority rule election on January 10, 1967. Uh, it also served as the place where The Voice was published. That was a, a publication by C.R. Walker, who was the editor. And it really brought up ideas and concerns for the community uh, uh, in Grants and Bain and, and also in Mason's edition, people who lived over the hill. And basically it was Voices of the People. It was a progressive newspaper and he was the editor. He was also, of course, a member of parliament in this time. So he was just a tremendous figure. Today this building is only a shell, inactive and unused, but nevertheless rich in Bahamian history, still standing tall in the over the hill community. Dr. Curry adds that as the tourism market shifted, more resorts were being built and in the 1980s, with mega resorts and the cruise ship industry expanding, the Reinhardt eventually closed its doors that shifted the dynamics and as I might add as racial discrimination lessened particularly after 67 black visitors could now stay in other hotels on Cabbage Beach and on Paradise Island one of the reasons why the Reinhardt was so successful was many black visitors stayed in here in this hotel so so uh, its functionality diminished as things changed uh, from the 60s into the 70s so it became a derelict building uh, in the last 20 or 30 years but it stands as a test testimony really to the vibrance of, of black culture in the over the hill area. The newest cohort to be a part of this year's job readiness program hosted by the Division of Youth for the next nine weeks. Youth officials say at the end of the program participants should be well on their way to excelling in the job market. Aspiring nurse and former graduate of Huntley Christie and Andros, Anique Monroe and budding entrepreneur Renato Eiford talked about their expectations. Look forward to meeting new people and learning everything that they offer in the team. Well, I expect to gain knowledge from it and a lot of experience, hopefully at the end, a job. To gain new skills, to gain more knowledge and gain a job is the final piece and gain more knowledge how to start a business. And as we head to the break, we take a look back at today in Bahamian history. On March 24, 1966, plans were announced for the richest ocean powerboat race in the world, which took place here in the Bahamas in May 1967. Also on this day in 2002, the Bahamas' ambassador to Japan, Sir Sidney Poitier, was awarded a Lifetime Achievement Oscar at the 74th Annual Academy Awards. shipping and delivery service. They are fast and efficient. They bring the ease of shopping to your fingertips. Free delivery and no dimensional weight charge. They're also offering 25% sign-up discount for the first six months. Make sure to give Blue Waters a call today at 1-242-803-5604. Visit their website today at bwshipping242.com. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Visit Home Care and Electrical and Home Decor, your one-stop shop on Joe Farrington Road, just west of the traffic light. We carry a full line of electrical and plumbing supplies, a huge stock of appliances upstairs, refrigerators, stoves, freezers, washers, dryers, plus we have all the household items you need. Right next door, you'll find Andros Beauty Supply for all your health and beauty needs, from hair colors, facial creams and soaps, to weaves and caps and so much more. Home Care and Electrical and Home Decor and Andros Beauty Supply, all in one building, Joe Farrington Road, open every day, including Sunday. At Home Care, we guarantee you the best prices in the Bahamas. Well, our roles from the World Indoor Championships touched down in the capital yesterday. Amajal Knowles was among those there to greet them at the Linden Pinley International Airport. 
Well, the new Duchess of Cambridge are set to touch down the Bahamas today, but yesterday, a celebration fit for royalty took place where two of the country's best athletes as world indoor championship medalist Shawnee Milowebo and Devin Charlton were welcomed home in grand style for the Junkanoo Rush Out celebration at Thomas Robinson National Stadium, along with family, friends, and supporters on hand. To welcome them was the country's Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Tourism, Investments and Aviation, the Honorable Chester Cooper. Adult, uh, sports tourism being a big component of what we do. I believe we even talked about sports in paradise, which I believe uh, was the mantra of a previous sports minister. As you would know, we've been inviting many different uh, types of sporting events to our shores. And we find these to be a great uh, draw for tourism to our country. So sports is a key component of the touristic offering. Uh, we have engaged many sports ambassadors uh, to work along with tourism to attract new events to our country. Also on hand to receive the pair was the Minister of Youth Sports and Culture, the Honorable Mario Boleg, who reiterated his ministry's commitment on ensuring our athletes have as much support as necessary. Don't get scared now, because <laughs> one thing I want to do as the Minister of Youth Sports and Culture is make sure that we show appreciation to our athletes. You know, I know what it is to be down there with the federations and preparing these athletes to go represent the country and struggling to get these athletes out of the country. They were representing us, we as a Bahamian. So I can assure this country that myself, along with the leader of the country, the Honorable Prime Minister, we take sports very seriously. And you will see that as time goes on. We're going to invest whatever we have to invest in our athletes to ensure that this country is represented well in all disciplines. And for the women of the hour, after representing the Bahamas on such a big stage, they both thank family as well as the country at large for their overwhelming support. Make sure that you make it clear that you're the best in this event, and I want you to get out all the titles that you can possibly get. And she wanted me to go after the World Indoor title at first. I was like, I don't know, you know, I'm not a fan of indoors, but, you know, once Mommy asked, there was the no riddle with that. <laughs> so, um, Mommy, that one was for you, obviously. Um. Um, I love and appreciate my parents. Um, and Ms. Charlton, and Mr. Charlton, congratulations again. Um, I think a lot of people don't quite understand um, the effort that the parents go to make sure that um, us athletes achieve our goals and actually... Um, get to live out our dream so my first round was I think 4 a.m. in the morning uh, Nassau time and I know a lot of people were up early tuning in um, and also during the day to see my second rounds and um, I could feel that support even on the other side of the world across oceans and just want to say thank you for uh, giving me something to to work towards Prime Minister General Philip Davis extending congratulations to the medalists. The women made their way to the gallery of the House of Assembly as members were debating an amendment to the National Heroes Awards and Honours. And it tells us this little rock on which we live, called the Bahamas, that we need to, you know, think about the pride and the, and the inspiration that we as a nation embraced when we saw uh, little Charlton going across those bars in the 60 meters and to come second. I mean, right there saying, come first. But she came second, beating the world. And of course, Shawnee in the 400. That tells us who we are and who we could be. Yes. Mm. Prime Minister referenced the importance of national honors and celebrating those that represent the country. Worldwide, we should be hearing the most honorable Shawnee Miller receiving the gold yes. medal. Yes. yes. And then what do we do? We are lifting up our honors. And so we don't have to just continually give. But the honors that we would have inherited. Yes, it is past, it's part of our history. It is. But sometimes the historical uh, weight that, um, that, that infects 
and influences the mind and goes to our ethos may be required to be shed so that we could free that mind to ensure we recognize who we are. Buddy Hill welcoming his former team, the Sacramento Kings, to Indiana last night. The first matchup since the NBA trade deadline deal. This game went right down to the final seconds as the Indiana Pacers and Buddy came up short on the last second tip in to lose 110 109. But an efficient 10 for 18 from the field, which included 5 for 8 from behind, the 3 point out. The finish with the game at 25 points and 7 assists, but it all came in a loss. I'm not, I'm gonna, people might look at this like, yeah, you can get your whole team back, but I'm not worried with that. I uh, just want us making the play down the stretch. Uh, my team may need me. You know, uh, maybe I should hold the ball and then come trap me and foul me. And, uh, but I'm just trying to get the ball over half court just so I won't get the eight seconds. Uh, but yeah, turn the ball, get me more. You know, we, we're not gonna make the playoffs. Of course, we want to build, but we want to compete as much as we can. But in reality, just is to get better each and every day. And, uh, you know, uh, you know I'm, I'm proud of myself. Uh, you know, I was doing a lot of things. I was not what I was able to do over there in Sacramento. You know, I made plays my teammates. Uh, Rick has trust me a lot to do more and uh, something I wanted to do. And, uh, and Sacramento didn't let me do it. I was just a guy just standing in the corner and just you know, catch and shoot. So uh, make the change is great for me. I'm happy to change. Yeah, no. Nah. And I'm happy the way I play, happy the way my basketball's going. I'm more freed up and uh, more peace of myself. Now I can play basketball again. Me and Dan DeAndre Aiden also with a big night as well, taking 24 shots, putting in 15. Even had a three-pointer on a career high night, 35 points and 14 rebounds, lifting the league leading Suns past the Minnesota Timberwolves, 125-160. Now the Suns are back on court tonight against those Denver Nuggets. Also from last night, the NBA G League, Kai Jones putting up big numbers in the league for the Greensboro Swarm, 15 points. 12 rebounds and three steals in the 123-112 win over the Lakeland Magic. Now the Swarm play again Friday against Westchester. We're going to take a break and when we come back, observances of the day. For as long as we've been a country, these islands have been a favorite for royalty. And for as long as the royals have adored us as a people, we've always been hospitable and gracious hosts. From a colony to a nation, now on the cusps of its golden anniversary, these shores have celebrated royal visits with class and dignity that is wholly Bahamian. As Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth celebrates her platinum anniversary on the throne, the islands of the Bahamas welcomes the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge on this, their first visit to the country. Our coverage starts Thursday, March 24 at 4 p.m. and continues through their departure Saturday, March 26. The ZNS Network, your home for the royal visit, William and Kate. we have some special hacks uh, for a Thursday morning. I'm going to read the first one. If you get confused, which air bud goes in which air? Use different color tips for the left and one for the right. All right. So I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and to get dirt off a screen, what do you do? That's the same thing you use when you get here and, and fuzz on the, the lint remover. You, you, you put a tape around something. What I normally do, like how yeah, you have this your cup on your mug, you, have, you take like, the lint tape. from the washing yeah. machine. Yeah, but you can yeah. use this, the end of it. You could to put the tape on something backwards and then roll it on. Tape tends to I'll teach you something after the show. Oh, okay. Wanna, uh, okay. So okay. Now, uh, today is National Observance Day, World Tuberculosis Day. Each mm -hmm. year we commemorate World Tuberculosis, known as TB, on the 24th of March to raise public awareness about the devastating health and economic consequences of the disease and the step of efforts to end the global pand epidemic. TB remains one of the world's deadliest infectious killers each day. Over 4,100 people lose their lives to TB and close to 20,000 fall ill with this preventable and curable disease. Also, 
I know you'll like this one, cheese steak day. Oh, the yeah. Philly cheese steak. This is raw with chip steak, mm -hmm. and you can order it without cheese or with cheese, but I like it with onions. And if you have had one, you can really get an authentic one in Philadelphia. I had one when I've been to Philadelphia one time, but I love it right here. So mm -hmm. let's uh, last observe it. Chocolate-covered raisins day. I don't like raisins covered in chocolate. I know some people like it, but it's national chocolate-covered raisins. They celebrate raisins coated in a shell of either milk chocolate or dark chocolate. In some countries, chocolate-covered raisins are known as, trivia question, raisinets. <laughs> raisinets? <laughs> Wow, I'm not a fan of raisins either, but I'm sure it was pretty good. But tomorrow, I'm, I'm sure we're all excited about tomorrow. Tomorrow is the big day, yes. a lot of activities, so stay tuned to yes. the Zedna Television Network for that, starting off with our morning show for a whole hour tomorrow, and then we're going to mm -hmm. end with the news. The Bahamas and I coming to you live from the Bahama Hotel. That's going to be, I think they're, they're going to start tonight. I tonight, think, tonight. This afternoon start, at 4, this so yeah, you might, guys may want to tune in for that. It's going to be awesome. Oh, the, the, the royal visit starts at 4 o'clock. They're scheduled around. Gonna... I know you're getting ready to go to the hair oh, trail. Yes, get yes. those nails and everything done. Yes. Oh, you have to go to the barber to get a shave. But <laughs> that's going to do it for the morning edition on Thursday. Make sure to tune in tomorrow and this evening for the rest of your royal coverage. Until then, have a safe one. Have a great morning, everybody. You're watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. Hello, I'm Beverly Curry, and welcome to Ordinary People. We're on Elbows Key.